Hey guys, want to do a video on some things that we actually recommend to our customers and also products that I have tried. I have these products in my home and they're things that I believe in. So I think there's all kinds of stuff out there. There's all kinds of products and brands and things like that. I would definitely defer to your local heating and air contractor that you trust when you're looking over some of this stuff and just seeing what they sell and what they recommend. But I believe there are five, five products that you should have in every single heating and air system. Every single heating and air system. And I'm not just talking about your heating and air system itself. So I'm not talking about the thermostat. I'm not talking about the indoor unit and outdoor unit, all that stuff. I'm talking about additional upgrades, if you will, things that you should consider for your home. And again, these are products that I have in my own house. I'm not being paid yet. <laughs> this is not a paid commercial for any of these particular products. In fact, I'm going to avoid even going over certain brands at this point. Again, just check with your local contractor that you trust. But again, if you're watching this, I think there's five products. So let's dive into this. The first thing I believe every heating and air system should have is a UV light, an air cleaner UV light. And I'm talking about just a regular old bulb. I'm not talking about the fancy, there's types of systems now that have UV lights incorporated. Maybe it produces ozone, maybe it cleans the air in some other type, but I'm talking about just a regular old bulb and I would want that thing shined on at least the return side of the evaporator coil and ideally two bulbs, one on the return side and one on the supply side. And if you have that, you're keeping that coil super clean. I have a customer, my gosh, I wish I would have taken a before picture because he had one of those old ream M coils. So there were like divots down in the coil that we cleaned and we did the best we could with, with the system without actually pulling the coil out and taking it outside. And they, we just simply could not get it physically clean 100%, right? There were just parts of that coil it had black stuff. I'm not gonna say the M word, but there were just black looking stuff down in that coil that we just simply could not physically get out. And so we installed a UV light on there and six months later we went back to do his preventative maintenance. And I'm telling you, I, I man, I wish I would have took a before picture because it was night and day. I mean, that coil was shiny silver after that. It had basically cleaned, taken care of all that. Now, obviously a bulb, a UV light bulb, is not going to necessarily filter air. It's it's not going to remove dust or particulates and things like that, but it made that coil shine. I mean, it was silver. It looked like a shiny new nickel down in there. And I, it made me a believer. You know, I did a one of my first YouTube videos. You can go back and look at it. it. It looks very rough and all that. I was just using a cell phone. And one of my first videos I did back then was just talking about UV lights. So I believe every heating and air system should have a UV light shining on that coil. The second thing I believe every system should have today is a whole house home filter. And I'm not talking about the disposable filters you get that last every 30 to 90 days. You can go to Lowe's or Home Depot to get them. I'm talking about the filters that are media. They, they're usually at least four inches thick and you slide them in and out and you're usually mounted somewhere in the return duct. And I know every house is different, may not make sense for your house, but there probably are options that you're not aware of. Check with your local heating and air guy that you trust. But I believe, and I, I'm not gonna go through all the ins and outs of brands and different medias and all that good stuff, but ultimately having something that's removing those particulates from the air, something that's a little better than that disposable filter, something that's going to keep that evaporator coil clean of particulates coming through that system and so on. 
They've even got filters now that clean particulates all the way down to cleaning out some of the viruses that a lot of folks are worried about today. Again, I'm avoiding names. I'm not trying to throw anything out there that someone could call me a liar, but there are really high MERV filters out there right now that can really filter those particulates and things like that out. So ultimately do some homework and definitely check that out. There are some filters that they believe in how well their filters work so well that they'll even pay for you to have your evaporator coil cleaned if that coil becomes dirty anytime in 10 years. So they believe in it that much. And some of those filters can last 12 months. So again, we're not talking about a disposable filter that you need to throw away every 30 to 90 days. We're talking about in some cases, if installed, you can remove the disposable filters and it will save you money. If you're used to putting a, you know, a nice 10, $20 filter you're getting from somewhere, from some big box store, and you're putting it in there, and then you switch to this media that's only got to be replaced once a year, and the media is only like 30 or 40 bucks, you can do the math and see that in the end, it actually is in your best interest. The third thing I believe every heating and air system should have is some type of ionizer. There's multiple brands out there. It ionizes the air. It can kill mold in your home. It can kill all kinds of other things in your home. Again, I'm avoiding saying certain things because I don't want to necessarily be inaccurate, but it does kill certain other things that you might be worried about in your home, but it ionizes the air. In some cases, it'll make the particulates in the air heavier to where it'll actually fall out of the air and things like that. That filter we just talked about, it'll catch more stuff and so on. Do some homework. Again, check with your local heating and air guy. There's multiple different companies out there. There's different brands and different types of products, but just something that ionizes that air in your home. The fourth thing is some sort of humidity control in your home. So whether that's a humidifier or dehumidifier, something can control the humidity, something that's gonna keep it in that optimum zone. We talked about in another video on that. You don't wanna be above a certain humidity or below a certain humidity and just keeping it right in that sweet spot so that way other things can't be growing in your house based on the humidity levels and things like that. And so just having something that will actually physically control that humidity in your home. Not to mention, it can actually make your home more comfortable. So you can actually save energy from the heating and air system running so much because, for example, a house that's 72 degrees that has a really high humidity level is going to be less comfortable than a house that has a lower humidity at 72 degrees. Okay, so just keep that in mind. And of course, we're talking about other things as well. Things like wood in your home would last longer and be better off if you were controlling the humidity in your home properly. And the last thing that I believe every heating and air system should have in America, the fifth thing, and that is surge protection. I did a whole video where I talked about surge protection and I actually have had some pushback, some other heating and air guys saying, hey, you know what, it's not as big of an issue in my area. I think that's great. But some of us were talking about systems that are 10, $15,000 for, for one system to replace that system. And you're not going to pay an extra few hundred bucks, couple hundred bucks to have surge protection put on that system. We do it when we protect our electronics in our home. We protect TVs and computers and all that. Why would you not want to protect one of the biggest investments for your home, which would be your heating and air system? As time has gone by, it's become even more of a big deal because of some of the technologies that are coming out. We have more motherboards and things like that that are being installed in the heating and air systems, and they do not like power surges. In the area that I'm in, it's actually quite common for us to get power surges. The power will go out and then it comes back on and you get these surges or different reasons, but ultimately you could have really big issues if you weren't protecting the, your home. Talk to your heating and air guy or talk to an electrician. Some electricians can install surge protection for your entire home. Either way, I think it would be a good idea. And then finally, if you are in the market for a new heating and air system, 
system. If you're in the Middle Peninsula or Northern Neck of Virginia, give us a call, Griffin Air. We would love to earn your business. But if you're not in our coverage area, you're somewhere else in the country and you are in the market for a new heating and air system, before you spend thousands, check out my new website, it's called newhvacguide.com. I'll put a link to it down in the comments. And this website, I basically wrote a book, made it a guide, put it on this website, and instead of having a book that would be outdated within a year or two, I'm able to constantly add things on there if new things come out. And the other thing is I've even put information on there that people in our industry don't even want you to know. So I've got a whole page called no-nos and you know just things to stay away from and so on. That being said, thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.